A major reason why Henry is going to break from the church is because of the fact that he lacks a son. Uh, he only has a daughter, and uh, the English do not do not like queens as the monarch at, at this time. Today, we don't you know we don't really uh, think about it too much. If you're you know if you if you unless you were born in the 19, 1940s and beyond and and sooner, you knew you have known more than one uh, English monarch. Uh, but for the vast majority of us, you, we've only known one monarch, the Queen Elizabeth II. So you and I think to ourselves, well, who cares? It's a, it's a queen. Great. There seems to always have been a queen. Uh, but nonetheless, um, back then, it was not a, as comfortable a notion as you would think it is today. But nonetheless, he, Henry does have a son. Uh, he finally gets a son through his third wife, Jane Seymour, and she will die as a result of the child's birth. Uh, but nonetheless, he does have a son. So when he dies, it's going to be up to his, his, uh, his son, Edward VI, to take over and to continue his movement. Now, the new king, unfortunately, is only nine years old when he inherits the crown. So it's inevitable that the government is going to be run by a number of powerful men who stand behind him. There's going to be a, what's known as a regency. Uh, and Edward VI is a very ardent Protestant. All right, he's a very, you know he's he's going to try to mold the people under the people who work with him are going to mold a the English church into a much more Protestant form. In fact, each one of Henry's children are going to uh, create the church in their own image. Uh, he has strong Lutheran Protestant leanings because of his teachers. Through their influence, the, the doctrines and the ceremonies of the church were altered. Uh, priests were permitted to marry. English will be spoken at, at services rather than Latin. The venerations of images and statues would be abolished. And new articles of belief would be drawn up, like, such, for example, uh, re repudiating all the sacraments, with the exception, of course, of baptism and communion. However, Edward has a problem. He's not going to last very long. In fact, he dies before his 18th birthday in 1553. And it seemed, uh, but by the time that he does die, it seems that England is now firmly in the camp of the Protestants. Well, the next monarch of England is going to be Henry's eldest daughter, Mary. Remember, Mary is the daughter of Catherine of Aragon, a Spaniard. And there's one thing that Spaniards are very passionate about, it's Catholicism. So, as ardent a, a, as ardent a Protestant as Edward was, that's how ardent Mary was about her Catholicism. Upon her accession, accession to the throne, she's going to try to return England to Catholicism. Not only does she restore the celebration of the Mass and the rule of celibacy, she even prevails upon Parliament to vote for a return to papal allegiance. Unfortunately, her, her policies fail. First of all, Protestantism by this time was already accepted amongst the English Mass. The ma uh, English masses. Additionally, many of the leading families were profiting from Henry the Seventh, Henry the Eighth's dissolution of the monasteries. They became committed to Protestantism because the, rest the restoration of church lands to Rome would mean loss of their newly acquired wealth. And remember, at this time, your wealth is actually in your land. Mary orders the burning of hundreds of Protestants. In fact, this is the reason why he, she is known as Bloody Mary. Uh, and these, these executions, however, were insufficient to wipe out religious resistance. In fact, you could say that it hardened the resentment towards her rule. Her persecution was puny compared to the tolls of deaths wrought upon the continent. But Englishmen remembered the English Inquisition, and it made them even more firmly anti-Catholic. Another serious cause of, of her failure was the fact that she was married to Philip II, and Philip II what happens to be the King of Spain. Although the marriage treaty stipulated that Philip could never be King of England, uh, the English would despise him because he was a Catholic zealot. But she only lasts five years. She dies childless in 1558, and the English Protestants are going to be relieved. Of course, another factor guaranteeing f her failure to restore England to the fold is the, is the briefness of her reign. So now it's up to Elizabeth to 
mold the English church into her fashion. And Elizabeth is more of a middle ground. She's a moderate uh, Protestant. She likes some things that are going on in, in the Catholic church. She likes some things going on in the Protestant church. So she tries to find this middle way. The question of whether uh, England was going to be Catholic or Protestant was going to be definitively settled by Elizabeth. Elizabeth is the, is the last uh, Tudor, uh, Tudor monarch and the, the youngest child, uh, the, the, the middle uh, child of Henry VIII. Remember, because Edward's the youngest, but nonetheless he is the boy, so he gets to go first. She is the daughter of Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn, and she was one of the most pe popular and capable monarchs to sit on the English throne. She's disposed to Protestantism, as I said, but she's no zealot. She recognizes that radical Protestantism in England posed a, dis a, a danger to both conservative Anglicans and English Catholics. So he fi she finds what we call the, the Elizabethan Compromise. She actually gets... Parliament to pass the Act of Supremacy in 1559. It repeals all of Mary's Catholic legislations and prohibits the exercise of any authority by religious, foreign religious powers. It made herself, she also made herself the supreme governor of the English church. It was much more of a Protestant title than Henry's supreme head of the, Catholic, of the English church. This was because at, most, at the time most Protestants believed that Christ alone was the head of the church. Elizabeth accepted most of the ceremonial reforms that were coming out of the Protestantism and that, and that his, her brother had, uh, had established. But on the other hand, she did retain the church government of bishops and left definitions of controversial articles of faith vague enough so that all but the most extreme Protestant and extreme Catholic could accept them. But long after Elizabeth's death, the Church of England is going to maintain this middle ground. Not 100% not, not Protestant, but also not 100% Catholic.